Ah, making a video. Uh, yeah, so I thought I'd play with this phrase. Um, you know, I didn't really do a proper response to Anacontavod's uh, desire messes up the free will thing, and I thought I would uh, play some more. <clears throat> Excuse me, my ears were so much better. Now they seem to have lost their <laughs> usefulness once again. <clears throat> anyway, um, uh, you know, that the consciousness is just a noise that the brain makes idea. And uh, I like that <laughs> metaphor. Um, I like that way of understanding that uh, it's real. It's a real noise, but it's not the real function of the brain. The real function is just action. And all of that is not within um, the control of anything we can easily identify in terms of a you, a thing, an entity. It's a, a bunch of mechanisms, a bunch of gear work, you know, inside your brain, your subconscious gear work, and it produces the manifestation of you-ness as an experience made out of uh, this, these, these thought concepts. Um, and uh, the feelings that go with them and which are generated through the sense organs <clears throat> when they can manage to function properly. <laughs> yeah, which mine aren't doing lately. <clears throat> That's like a kind of odd thing. He must have a tube problem too. Anyway. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been one of those days, Jesus. I had to fight with a sump pump all morning. <sighs> I hate sump pumps. <sighs> yeah, I really do. I really have learned to hate them with a passion. <sighs> Stupid, lousy. I've been just unlucky. You know, some people buy one that lasts for 10 years. <clears throat> no matter which one I get, new or used, or however I get it, it just somehow manages to turn into a piece of shit. So anyway, I've got three of them I gotta fix now. Anyway, but that'll give me something else to do that I don't want to do. Oh, fuck. Anyway, <clears throat> maybe I can do a video on that. Some pump repair. <laughs> yeah, there'll be a lot of duct tape involved, I'm sure. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, we're not blew up entirely, it fell right apart. So that's, you know, I'll just put it back together and pour some oil in it and see what the fuck happens. I suppose. Anyway, I'm really off the subject, aren't I? Yes, I am. Just explain, I'm having one of those days. Um, so, um, desire. So, yes, yeah, so all of our feelings are very strange things. We, we feel them strangely. Um, you know, I mean, they have a, an erroneously ambiguously, uh, you yeah, know, they're just weird, you know, just by their nature to us. <clears throat> we don't experience them and say, ah, I can explain that exactly. <laughs> I can perfectly describe what I just felt. No, hard to do. Um, but that doesn't mean that our brain doesn't understand them completely. Our brain created them. <laughs> you know, our brain threw a bunch of code into the the, let's call it the mixing bowl, or whatever you want to call it, the consciousness, the place. It threw the crap into the place, but it knew what crap it threw in there. And um, in a sense, it threw it in there just because it wants to do math. And so the, the place it mixes play things, it wants to do the math. So it threw in code 48, which means sore toe. And then it threw in emotion. Oh, I haven't been getting any lately. Uh, you know, some kind of bullshit like that. Code 88. Threw in a bunch of codes, and then the codes mixed together in our consciousness. Um, I want to be a good person. I need ego gratification. I need uh, sensual gratification. I'm uh, dissatisfied with my current status in life. Blah, 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 blah. So it throws all that mishmash in there. And just says, uh, okay, make an output. Make a, make a, uh, a sum. You know, add it up and uh, make some, you know, boop, 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 I'll do something. <laughs> you know, and that's what it does. That's, that's all there is. So from the 
brain's perspective. It's just a place it uses to do its math. And I've sort of explained that it does it this way because it needed to create uh, a plus and a minus in terms of a concept. It had to have the utility of being able to declare something good and something bad so it could orchestrate behavior. And obviously the end result of the DNA molecule is survival. And through experience, four billion years of it, it acquires an understanding, uh, quote unquote, um, of what survival requires. And so it knows that there's these certain things need to be incentivized as trends. It wants you to have the trend of, you know, not tripping over stuff, not doing damage to yourself, not this, not that. So it creates a sense mechanism that makes you capable of avoiding harm by creating attractive and repulsive, um, and by creating, you know, look out, you know, negative, run away, get away, uh, pull that knife out of your ass. It, it, it creates uh, mechanisms um, that incentivize us. That is, one part of the brain communicates to the other part of the brain through the mixing bowl. The input comes in, the brain adds flavor, and then the output is decided based on the total mix and what it uh, has established as, uh, you know, what that mixture means in terms of a behavior uh, scenario. And so it's just a way for elements of the brain, a place for elements to communicate with each other. It's their medium of communication is through this mechanism we call consciousness. But they're not reading your consciousness. They're not saying, you know, they're not, it's your, your, your body is not reacting to what you're actually conscious of. It's just reacting to what it has put in in terms of a hormone or, you know, your adrenaline or some other thing. So it's reacting more viscerally to what's in the mixing bowl and you're left with this the noise the vibration so just this noise of an engine doesn't have much to do with function i mean you can hear the valves ticking tick, 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 tick. you can hear some things going on but generally speaking the noise doesn't give you an accurate representation of what the mechanical device is actually doing it just gives you a, a, a sense of it, a, a piece of it, represented. And that's what we're experiencing is a piece of our brain's function, a piece of the mixing bowl that has this uh, you know, important um, plus and minus thing added in. The, the mechanism that creates the motivational engines, that fuels the engines. And, but we're just, it's just a, it's just the, uh, a manifestation of it. It's not really how it works. The brain's working on a whole different kind of code than we are experiencing. It's just that the two are parallel. The engine, as you rev the engine louder, the sound changes. And uh, it's sort of how our consciousness works. And sometimes there's inverse relationships. Sometimes it runs quieter when you're running it harder or faster. Uh, and so we sort of experience that sometimes when we're really preoccupied with something. Uh, it all, our consciousness gets quite quiet. It gets quite uh, uh, hummy. Mm. <laughs> yeah, um. You know, it's uh, not ironic that that would be the statement because the sound does get quiet. It does get... Um, less noise in it, less, less eccentricity. And uh, so that's, you know, so, so we, it, it's, obviously it's not very intuitive to experience consciousness and say, oh, uh, that's not what the brain is really doing. Because you're saying, wow, this is such a, a big thing. This must be something the brain does on purpose. But I think the truth is, I think the evidence indicates 
that this isn't the purpose. This isn't the function. <laughs> the function is just to create a, a place to create feedback, to create an instrumentality that allows uh, a, a reaction to action, a constant reaction to action. Um, you know, and that this is just what you get as a byproduct. The byproduct of turning the action to reaction feedback engine crank gets you this experience um, as a byproduct. It's the noise the brain will make as it consum, 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 as it grinds um, experience, as it grinds uh, pixels and uh, electricity and different interactions with the material and energetic universe as it combines those in inputs uh, this conchunk sound <laughs> is what you get as the byproduct um, <clears throat> so anyway that's why I would say that uh, although you are correct in, in even I would say that feelings have a way weirdness about them that doesn't fit with any kind of notion of explicit, technical, uh, exact. They feel inexact. They feel incredibly analog, like lots of noise in the signal kind of thing. Uh, but from the brain's perspective, uh, the workings of your brain, uh, it's all very exact. It's all highly technical in terms of the values applied. Um, there may well be some byproduct in the conscious experience that's totally ignored uh, you know, by the reactive subconscious brain uh, in the sense that it does seem to prioritize experiences very different sometimes than you personally experience them. Uh, sometimes little events have a big impact in your life, in your psychology. Your brain goes back to them over and over again, where you will sometimes, your brain seems totally oblivious to what your logic says should be incredibly significant events in your life. And just because of the nuance of the triggers, the emotional and um, uh, biological, uh, hormonal um, triggers the brain looks for to create important memories. Um, they aren't there. They weren't there for that experience because of some distraction or some special circumstance or medication or some other thing. And so that, that was experiences, although they were very noisy in your consciousness, they weren't very noisy. They weren't very loud. They weren't very interesting uh, from your brain's stored memory perspective. From its standards of what's an interesting happening, it didn't even feel like turning the camera on. And so there's probably some aspect of that that does take place where, you know, we can remember a conscious experience uh, that was uh, worth remembering, <laughs> but we are barely holding on to it. Our brain will barely cling to it. We can barely resolve it. It's such a weak memory. And then we have incredibly strong memories about inane, silly crap. You know, where we were sitting in a chair reading a book. <laughs> you know, and we remember what we were smelling and what we were tasting and what we were feeling. Uh, you know, quite in quite a bit of rich detail. For some reason, the brain uh, captured all of that, recorded every bit of it, because it triggers said this is important. Um, and so we can sort of see that that's the subconscious is grinding uh, different than your, uh, what you sense as a logical thinking machine. And so the, your logic doesn't necessarily fit your abstract logic with the internal logic of your subconscious. It, it's, your subconscious is definitely a logical engine. It's just that its logic has a different 
foundation and basis uh, than what you have concluded in your model of yourself, in your perception of yourself, uh, your abstract held intelligent notion of yourself uh, isn't accurately identifying what's really moving you, <laughs> the psychology. Uh, yeah. Boy, you go on forever on this subject. I mean, I just touched on the word psychology, and so you can start a whole, a whole bunch on the difference between uh, the philosophical or, or abstract modeling of your own psychology and the actual psychology, what actually you react to. Because the two personalities are always very different, at least in my case, not always. Uh, I can certainly, my philosophical disposition is quite ordered and disciplined and reasonable, <laughs> but my, my psychology is so passionate and, and obnoxious <laughs> and unyielding and unforgiving and all that crap. So it's a strange uh, uh, um, a disconnect. So anyway, until the next time and such, so forth and whatnot. Long day already. Only half over. <laughs> Until next time.